Well, hello and welcome to all of you who are joining us for our Fresh Start PAUMC service today. We're so blessed to have you with us and we're blessed to be able to worship together in spirit from wherever we are right now. This weekend we are continuing on in our series, What on Earth Am I Here For? And Pastor Mark will be sharing part five of that series with his message called, You Are Called to Bless. But before we get to that message, we're going to begin with our time of worship through song, a time for us to open our hearts, express our hearts, and praise and worship to our awesome God who is worthy of all our praise. awesome to know that our God's grace is always enough for us and that there's never a place that we could find ourselves where he's not with us, where he's not gone before us, where he's not fighting for us. 
And these next couple of songs remind us who our God is to us, that wherever he leads us, he's with us, and that he's all we need. And so as we continue to worship him, let's remember who he is, as he remembers us, he remembers his people and his children. We're his people, his children. Let's worship him in spirit and truth together.
It's always been you. It always is you. It always will be you. Lord, we thank you that not only do you make a way for us where there is no other way, but you became the way for us where there was no other way. Lord, how we thank you for all that you do for us and all that you are for us. Lord, we are gathered together right now in spirit to worship you, to learn more about who you are and who you call us to be in you. Lord, help us to be ready for you to teach us more and to make us more like you as we spend this time in your presence. God, we give you thanks and praise. And we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hello, church family, and welcome to PAUMC Fresh Start Church. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like button and feel free to comment and chit chat with each other. It's always great to see how today's message has touched you. And please don't forget to share. You never know who needs to hear today's message. A few announcements before we get into the word today. The annual charge conference date has been changed to Thursday, November 12th at 7 p.m. at the Pine City campus. Come on out and meet our new district superintendent, Jeff McDowell, for a for an in-person meeting. As election day is approaching, our nation is in need of prayer. So we are asking you to join us in a time of prayer and fasting on Tuesday, November 3rd. Please check out our website at paumconline.org for the details. Also on election day, from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Pine City campus doors will be open for anyone who would like to pray. PAUMC Fresh Start Youth Group is asking for donations for gently used hat, gloves, scarves, blankets, and socks. We are working on our fifth year of distributing to our homeless community, and what a blessing it has been to be able to help keep our community warm. But we couldn't do it without your donations. So if you could look in your closets, check your attics, ask your friends. We take all sizes, men, women, and children. We will have a table set up in front of the glass doors in the fellowship hall entrance for an easy drop off. God is at work, amen? As we look forward to our to Consecration Stewardship Weekend in three weeks, we are happy to call on a member of our Watkins Glen campus to share his stewardship testimony. Jim Guild, or Gilly, was the first person from the Watkins Glen area to come on board to join our new campus in Schuyler County. Gilly gave his life to Jesus Christ in the winter of 2016 while he was attending church in Florida. Amen. As he was about to come back to New York State, where he owns famous brands, oh, another deal, and Ben and Jerry's ice cream, Jim said to his friend Steve Woodworth, a.k.a. Woody, now that I've been born again, where will I go to church? Woody said, well, I just happen to know of a new church that will be starting in Watkins Glen this year. Pastor B... Pastor Bill began a men's Bible study with Gilly and Woody that summer. This men's growth group continues today. Since Gilly attended the first study, he and his wife Becky have become very involved with our Watkins Glen campus. Please listen to what Jim has to say to us today. About our commitment to PAUMC Fresh Start. One church, many locations. I thank God for his unconditional and everlasting love and to have all my sins forgiven and to be blessed to live with our family in America, the greatest country on earth. This church 
has come to mean a lot to us. We truly look forward to attending services on Sunday and joining in group studies. We love hanging out with you, our beloved church family. You have helped us so greatly in growing closer to God. It is an honor to be a member of this Christian family. And I encourage you to join Becky and me as we prayerfully consider our support of PAUMC Fresh Start in the coming year. Please join me as we pray about our commitment to this consecration stewardship this fall. O oh Lord, giver of life, and source of freedom. We know that all we have is received from your hand. Gracious and loving God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us always to use your gifts wisely and teach us, us to share them generously. Send the Holy Spirit to work through us bringing your message to those we serve. May our faithful stewardship be a witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. We pray with grateful hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Gilly, for that uh, very moving testimony. We appreciate your heart and your prayers, and we hope to see you soon back from Florida. Well, I want to say hello and welcome to all of you to PAUMC Fresh Start. Thank you for joining us, whether it be online or at one of our campuses. I am, in fact, Pastor Mark, and uh, I want to welcome you again to this series of What on Earth Am I Here For? This week we're going to take a look at the fourth calling of your life, and it is that you are called to bless. You're called to bless other people. Now this series has been linking God's call on our lives to God's purposes for our lives. And those purposes are the five reasons that God has created you. That's the five assignments that he has for your life. So first, we explored that you are called to be loved by God. And when you return that love, you will find that your purpose is to worship God. That is, to be in relationship, to enjoy that relationship, because it's all about relationship and not about religion. And then we looked at you are called to belong to be adapted into God's family, and that purpose is fellowship, doing life together with the family of God. And then next, you were created to become like Christ, and that purpose for our lives is called discipleship. That is, you're running your marathon with others who are like-minded. Remember, God is concerned about our character, not about our comfort. And he wants us to grow up to be strong like an oak tree and not mushy like a mushroom. <laughs> now we come to our fourth purpose, and that is ministry. Ministry. You fulfill that when you understand that you are called to bless others. Called to bless others. Now ministry is simply this. It's serving the people around us. You bless others when you serve them. And how do you do that? It may be physical assistance or financial assistance or emotional support or relational support. It could be practical support. There are a thousand different ways that you can fulfill the calling to bless others. And you, and you fulfill that calling when you serve others. That's when you serve others others. And that brings us to the, the focus of this sermon, that you were shaped for serving God. You were shaped for serving God. 
Our memory verse is Ephesians 2.10. Would you read that with me? We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And where is that? It's Ephesians 2.10. Now, nobody else has experienced life exactly like you. Maybe similar to, but not exactly like you. No one else has your DNA, your gifting, or your heart, or the mix of abilities and personality that you have. God has gifted you so that your part of his family gets what is needed. Remember, each of us is a special part of the body of Christ, and all the parts are needed in order to function properly. We see in 1 Peter 4.10 that Paul wrote, God has given each of you some special abilities. Be sure to use them to help each other, passing on to others God's many kinds of blessings. You see that when we take a look at our shape that God has given us. In our reading this coming week, we will learn much more about that, what it means to be shaped by God for the ministry that he has for each of you. But shape stands for spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experiences. Now the S in shape is for the spiritual gifts that God has given us, those special God-empowered abilities that are given to believers in order to serve him. They aren't something we get to choose. They are distributed by the Holy Spirit in order to complement the needs of the body of Christ. The H in shape is all about listening to your heart and its motivations, those things that you love to do that you care about the most, and figuring out how that can all come together to serve God. A is for the abilities that you have learned and acquired during your lifetime, from art and science, math and writing, techno technical things, human interaction, cooking, gardening, teaching, nursing, handling money, all sorts of things. There are simply thousands and thousands of things that we have learned in our lifetime that can be used to serve God and serve others. Now the letter P in shape stands for personality and how God uses every personality that there is to meet the needs of others. Look around. Don't look too closely, but just look around. No one else is quite like you. And when you do that, when you do what you're good at and you use it to serve him, you will experience fulfillment, satisfaction, and fruitfulness. And the letter E stands for experience. God wants us to use our life experiences in serving others too. Remember when we talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly and all the things that work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Every life, every life is full of challenges and successes. When you use your hard-earned insight to help others, you're bringing a blessing to them that only you can share. Now, here are some photos of activities in our church that kind of... Uh, let you know that you can put your God-given shape to God-intended use at any time of the day or night, any day of the week, any week of the year, anywhere we are, and in any circumstance. That means that no matter what situation you find yourself in, you can be in ministry, serving others, whether it's leading a business, being a first responder, being a mother, driving a bus, teaching music, going to school, praying for our country, cleaning, scraping, painting, taking out the garbage, cooking a meal, delivering groceries, driving a bus, helping others find peace in their lives. God has shaped you for ministry that blesses others. A couple of weeks ago, as I watched Barb Haskell during our services signing for one of our deaf members, I simply marveled 
at how our words can become an art form that helps someone understand what it is we are saying. Barb has volunteered for many years with our food cupboard ministry. She's helped out with Celebrate Recovery. She's been in numerous growth groups and, and supports many other events and activities that go on here at our church. She supports them with her prayers, her presence, her time, her talents. How many lives have been blessed over the years? I don't know. Only God knows. But despite all of life's challenges that Barb has faced, and she's faced a lot of them, she's discovered something very important, that we find joy in our lives when we bless others. We find joy in our lives when we bless others. Because when we serve, we take the focus off ourselves. We take the focus off ourselves. As it says in Philippians 2.17, Paul wrote this. He says, my life is being poured out as a part of the sacrifice and service I offer to God for your faith. Yet I am filled with joy, and I share that joy with all of you. As God pours his life into us, it needs to flow through us and be shared with others. If we simply keep receiving blessings from God, but do not share them, we will actually dry up. I'm reminded of the Dead Sea, known also as the Great Salt Sea. It's downstream from the Sea of Galilee and is fed by the Jordan River. The Sea of Galilee has a distinction that it is the lowest fresh water body in the world, the lowest fresh water body. The Jordan River flows out of the Sea of Galilee on down to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is 1,400 feet below sea level, the lowest body of water on earth. Now the Dead Sea has no outlet for it. It only gets, the water gets evaporated. And because it only evaporates, it leaves behind all the salts and minerals. And the Dead Sea has gotten its name because there is no marine life in it. It can't support crops. You can't drink that water. You don't want it in your house doing anything. And in fact, if you go into the water there, you end up floating on top of it as if it, the water actually was like a big floaty. It's not good for anything. The water is dead. Water flows in, but no water flows out. Water flows in, but no water flows out. That's a lesson for us. That when the water flows in and nothing flows out, we, in essence, can end up dried up like the Dead Sea. Not supporting life, not giving life. But God has said out of us will flow rivers of living water if we allow him to fill us up. But we must allow that to overflow and refresh others. You see it in Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in your faith as you were taught, and overflowing, overflowing with thankfulness. From you will flow rivers, of living water. Our source of water. The living water needs to be Jesus. In him and through him we find the ultimate refreshing that fills us up like the Sea of Galilee. Enough that we can overflow and be a source to others. Real servants, real servants make themselves available. Real servants pay attention to the needs of others. And they do the best they can.
they can with what they have. They do every task with equal dedication. They're faithful to the ministry and above all, maintain a low profile. In 1 Corinthians 15, it says, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your work in the Lord is never, never wasted. Never wasted. And our goal is this in this church, every member a minister. And we will provide an opportunity to discover all the different ministries that we have at an upcoming ministry fair when we can all get back together again in person worship. We have a video for you. It's from a, a, one of our members. Her name is Brandy Terry. And she relates in this video about her experience, how it changed her life to have gone to a ministry fair. Let's give our attention to Brandy. Hi friends, Brandy Terry from the Pine City campus here. I wanted to take a second to invite you to our upcoming ministry fair and tell you why that ministry fair has made such a huge difference in my faith journey. I've been coming to church here for about 15 years and this is my third time participating in the What on Earth Am I Here For campaign. The first time I participated, I had only been coming to church here for a few months and I got an invitation to the ministry fair, just like you're getting now. And I remember thinking, I'm not gonna sign up for anything. There's not gonna be any ministry that I want to do or am willing to give up my free time to do. But boy, did God have another plan for me. That first year, I signed up for two ministries. And I want to tell you that 15 years later, I am still actively involved in those two ministries. And those ministries have helped to grow my faith because I know that God called me to be a part of those ministries. So I'm inviting you to join us at our ministry fair. Maybe you'll find something that fits your unique shape, your talents, your abilities, your personality. But I'm asking you to come with an open heart and an open mind and a willingness to let God call you to a ministry that he has uniquely carved out for you. See you there. Well, thank you, Brandy. Uh, I just love her testimony, and, and we love working with Brandy on the website and, and many other ways, too, as she leads our growth groups. And so it's inspiring, and it's neat to know how a ministry fair and the opportunity to learn how to minister to others can change our lives. 50, I didn't realize she'd been doing that 15 years. Did you know, did you know that our retirement package is out of this world? Think about that for a minute. Now, our, our retirement package as Christians is out of this world. But until that day comes, until that day comes, we can always give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Faithful servants never retire, do they, Bill? We might retire from our job, but not from our calling, not from our true vocation. Every member a minister all the days of our lives because you are called to bless others. Let's pray. Lord, you who formed us and love us, saved us, and have given us new life, you, Lord, are worthy of our praise, worthy of our love, worthy of our thoughts, and worthy of our thankfulness. We ask that as you speak to each of our hearts, that we would be motivated to good works because of your great love. That you would help us to seek, to find, to discover that the shape you have given us is a gift, not only for ourselves, but to those around us. You have fitted us for ministry in the body of Christ. And now may we discover what that is and rise. May we rise to your calling for our lives and live our lives in service to you. May we walk upon the waters where you lead us. And may we know that when we follow you, your grace 
is enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Now normally, we would dismiss you at this time to go to the ministry fair, but as I said earlier, we're having to postpone that until the day when we can resume in-person worship services. When that comes, we'll let you know. But I wanted to leave you with this challenge for the weeks, three parts to this challenge. The first is concerning your growth group. What project can you do together in your growth group? And then the second one is this. When you look at your own family, look for an opportunity that you and your whole family can do together. And then thirdly, ask yourself this. God, what role do you have for me? What role do you have for me? Amen? Amen. We come to this time in our service where we can remember what Jesus has done for us. We remember what he did on the cross to give his life for us, to save us, to give us new life and the opportunity to love him. Now is the time for you at home if you haven't got your communion elements uh, together. You can get them now and, and be ready. We remember Jesus Christ through this very special time of communion. We recall his love and his grace in the bread and the cup. And Paul wrote that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. And so in these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Well, as we begin to wrap up our service today, we want to remind you that we are so blessed that you've joined us. We're blessed to be worshiping together with you. And we do hope and pray that as you've been with us, that you have heard God speaking to you and that you are opening your heart and allowing him to guide you and lead you as you seek to serve him. We do have one last song of praise to sing together. And this song reminds us that we are called to run after God's heart. We're called to seek him and find him. And as we do that, it's amazing where he'll lead us. So let's not just sing about this today, but let's actually do that as we go into this week ahead. Let's continue running after God's heart together.
God bless you all. Have a blessed week.